guys, it's Olivia and welcome back to Living Literature. Thank you so much for the love and support I received in my last video and if you've not seen it yet, feel free to head over to your channel to check it out. Well guys, I'm sure you're maybe some of you are surprised to see the title of today's video because uh, a certain someone who shall not be named may or may not have promised at the end of the October season to post a part two to vampire book recommendations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wonder who that could have been. Anyways, basically, I am not done reading vampire books. I'm just gonna be honest. Like, I have been okay. Let me just, I'm just gonna level with you guys. This October, I thought it was gonna be like spooky, scary season, and I was gonna be like living it up for dark academia and all the darkness and be like, yes, I'm so ready to enter my emo era. And I'll be honest, I've just been reading silly little romances, as I've been talking about in several videos. I've just been reading silly little fall romances, but I'm back on my dark stuff, okay? I'm back on my dark emo. Okay, I'm back on it. I'm back on it and happy to be there. Okay, I'm happy to be back. We're back, baby. <laughs> In my dark, dark academia, my vampire world, I'm happy to be there. So there will be a follow up video at some point for vampire book recommendations part two. But as you've seen from the title of today's video, we are doing werewolf slash monster romance book recommendations because for many reasons, but. <laughs> Let's just level with, I'm just going to level with you guys. I, werewolves have been in the reading community for, I would say, years. Like, years and years and years and years. Since the dawn of time, werewolves have been a subject that have come up, has come up in literature. Now, I feel like it wasn't until, obviously, Twilight was, like, the groundbreaking point of, like, people being like, oh, yes, obsessed with werewolves. <laughs> And then from like 2007 to like 2014, werewolves was all anyone could think about until everyone got so sick of it. We got so sick of werewolves. I think everyone just got sick of it. And that includes me. I was very much not in my werewolf or vampire era for like years and years and years until now, like 10 years after the fact. Now I'm entering my vampire werewolf era. Very hard and heavy. And so I feel like the world is finally like getting back with being like, hey, like werewolves are cool again. Like, let's try to like integrate this into some books. Now, to be so for real, I haven't read that many werewolf books, which is why this is a werewolf slash monster romance book recommendation, because I have read a couple of monster book, monster themed book recommendations that I want to throw in here as well. So we get kind of like a little bit of both of like werewolves and monsters, like throwing it up in there. And I will also say that I'm not a connoisseur of monster romance all that often. It does come up every now and again in my repertoire, but it's not like, I'm not like the go-to gal for a monster book recommendation. Okay. Like there are girls on the book talk who are the go-to gals for a monster themed book recommendation. If you want to get into some freaky stuff, you go check out the girls on book talk. Okay. Go check them out. Go check out the lads and ladies on book talk, the girls and the gays and the theys, like they know what they're doing, okay? I, on the other hand, am like a very novice into monster romance. So I will be recommending a few that I've read here today. But the heavy focus will be werewolves. There will probably be, I'm so sorry guys, because vampires and werewolves do go hand in hand. So there will be a little bit of overlap of like some books that I've already recommended here on the channel. Look, listen, I'm sorry about it, okay? I'm sorry. I'm running out of Halloween topics <laughs> because I have only been reading fall romances and I haven't been reading the books I'm supposed to be reading. I'm sorry, like the, the heart wants what it wants and right now apparently my heart wants to run away to a small little cafe that's like a pumpkin spice little thing up in Maine or whatever and just like open up a little shop and meet a, lum a sexy lumberjack and like have his babies or whatever. But I want it now! Sue me. Normally I'm all for like slaughtering the, slaughtering freaking orcs with my sword and like brandishing it off with some fey sexy dudes and having like a really hot and heavy assassin time. That's norm normally my vibe. But for some reason this fall I just want to like curl up with a cup of cocoa and have a, the sexy lumberjack build me a fire and we'll just lay under like a fur blanket and talk about our feelings. Are you talking about? Hmm? You are Elastigirl! My God, pull oh, yourself together! 
I'm really excited to talk about werewolves and monsters with you guys today. If you're seeing some repeats here, don't mention it in the comments. Listen, I know, I know, but we'll be back hot and heavy with next week's video. I have a brilliant idea for next week's video and I'm very, very excited to get to it. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. But regardless, we're here today to talk about werewolves. So let's get started. Okay, I'm not even going to bore you guys because I've talked about this book way too often on the channel and I'm just going to speed right through it because we're not even going to address it, okay? It's going to be like it didn't even happen. I just have to put it out there in case for some reason the one person on planet Earth who hasn't heard me yap about this stupid book hasn't heard my spiel yet. Very quickly, Bride, okay? Five second rule. Really fast, okay? Bride is awesome. Bride is sexy. Bride is great. Bride is the greatest thing you'll ever read this year. Bride is werewolves. My husband, Lo Moreland. Okay. The book is giving mafia vibes. Vampire werewolf arranged marriage. Lo Moreland is a alpha werewolf married to this vampire girl named Misery Lark. Okay. It is hot. It is sexy. It is beautiful. I'm not going to go on, okay? You guys have heard me yap enough about this book and how much I am in love with Lo Moreland. If you want to know more about my thoughts on Lo Moreland, check out my TikTok. I'll just upload a clip right here. It's just the way, the way that I would die for this man. The way that I would die for this man is, it's a sickness. It's a disease. It's unreal. I, any slander from the booktubers or book talkers or whatever online that you are seeing is incorrect, okay? This book is perfection. <laughs> ah! Anyways, so you've seen enough, I'm sure. We're done talking about Bride. That's it. Shh. No, no more. No more. Someone's like, I'll shut up now about Bride. Okay, bye. How was shutting up? Next, moving on to one that I mentioned in a previous episode. I think I mentioned it in my vampire um, episode of books or my which one. I can't really remember. But regardless, we have Sarah Hawley's A Werewolf's Guide to Seducing a Vampire. Okay, so I mentioned this one that I read the, um, I think it's Glimmer Falls. Yes, the Glimmer Falls trilogy. So we have A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon a demon's guide to wooing a witch and of course a werewolf's guide to seducing a vampire so i actually read this one first in the glimmer falls series but i actually recommend you read it in order i did that on accident don't do what i did but i will say that like now that i've read the other two books this one is even more special to me i think it, it might be my favorite of the three. First one's a close second but i will say this one might be my favorite of the three like i seriously love it it's so cute we have sexy zaddy like Ben Rosewood is a werewolf. He's like in his late 30s. He owns a plant shop. He wants to turn it, he wants to open up like a coffee shop, like emporium thing, kind of like with it. He's a workaholic. He is like very like anxiety ridden. He's a shy guy, a quiet guy, but he's just this big werewolf dude. Like he's huge. And on accident one night, he accidentally like is drunk one night and he eBay orders himself a vampire succumbus. If you don't know what a succumbus is, do your own research, okay? Like, I'm not gonna go into all that because we're talking about werewolves. We're not talking about vampires and succumbuses, which by the way, are like a super fun little like fantasy thing in there. So look up the word succumbus, okay? You guys all go check it out. Anyways, so Ben accidentally eBay orders this like tiny like blue crystal online, not knowing that inside this crystal is this vampire succumbus woman um, who has been living in there for the past like 600 years and is essentially like there's a curse on the crystal that like forces her like whoever like owns the crystal basically owns her and can like essentially force her to do anything that they ask like she's like it's kind of like an Ella Enchanted situation where like Things. any command is like automatically obeyed and unless it's like not you know unless it's in the form of a question or whatever so like it's very much like Ella Enchanted vibes if you've seen that movie, which is so good. So Eleanor is this vampire who is like in her like early 30s and stuff because she's had some like spurts of time like within the crystal or whatever. Ben finds her they, and he's essentially like while he's like trying to do stuff with his sister and like help out the town and stuff. He's essentially also trying to figure out how to like free her from this curse. But she is like so like out of touch with like how the world works and like they're kind of like figuring this thing out together. There's a romance that starts blooming. It's very cute because she's so like batty and hard and just like aggressive and angry. And he's so just like quiet and sweet and like very gentle and like, oh, I need him. Need him so badly. I like love him. Like I'm obsessed with him. Like if I had to describe like right now, my current type is this man in a sweater vest. Okay. It's this stupid male werewolf 
and a sweater vest, guys. Like, ugh. You need Jesus. Go back to church. Like, it's giving, this one is very much giving, like, Taylor Swift's, like, in, Taylor Swift's, like, in a world of boys, like, he's a gentleman. Like, I can't get over it. I'm freaking obsessed. If you want to read a cute little fall, like, fantasy themed like book that's like a urban fantasy I highly recommend the Glimmer Falls trilogy like they're all very cute this one by far is my favorite I think it's darling and so I 10 out of 10 recommend I think it's cute I think you guys would enjoy it next for a quick one this one I just want to throw in here again this might be for some of my younger audience members for my like true YA's I'm gonna recommend Scarlet from the Lunar Chronicles uh series now the Lunar Chronicles was a huge series back in the day and when I say back in the day I mean when I was like 15 or 16 years old I was obsessed with the Lunar Chronicles. You couldn't have pulled me away from the Lunar Chronicles. I thought it was the best thing ever written. I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. And then I discovered SJM and my whole life changed. So, but this book, this book series is one of the best fantasy retellings. Like this whole series is one of the best fantasy retellings I've ever seen done. I think it is absolutely brilliant what Marissa Meyer was, was able to do with the Lunar Chronicles. So Scarlet is the second book in this um, like four book series technically. And each book is fate based off of like a different fairy tale. So Cinder is like Cinderella. Scarlet is like Little Red Riding Hood. Um, and then you have Cress, which is uh, Rapunzel. And then Winter, which is Snow White. So. Uh, hi. <laughs> Essentially, this is like a Little Red Riding Hood uh, retelling that connects with the first book. Sh Scarlet is the name of the main character. And she ends up meeting with this like street fighter guy named Wolf. And wolf at the time like seems like super normal but essentially like things happen along the way where he becomes more like his like more like wolf like he's part of like a pack and things like that the book is fabulous i absolutely love it this is definitely for more of my like ya younger readers but i still recommend it's really fun and like fast and fast paced and just absolutely so entertaining if you haven't read this series already i highly recommend it it is so fun and great but it's definitely a ya so like for my older audiences you guys might not like this one but for my younger people you guys might be so into this and i absolutely recommend recommend it. I love this book. It is so good. Next we have this hideous cover that I don't even want to hear any comments about because I know, okay? We have Elise Kova's A Dawn with the Wolf King. Now I talked about how I read the whole like um five book Married to Magic series. Elise Kova has designed a world in which there are five um, individual books, each set in a different era. You don't have to read all of them. You can literally just read this one. This is a standalone. You don't have to read any of the other ones. But regardless, it's cute if you do, but you don't have to. Um, Elise Kova. So the premise of this one is that there's a young girl named Phelan. She's a witch. She is essentially in charge of like keeping up the wards around like her like neighboring town in the forest. And she's all alone because her um, her grandmother's recently passed. Again, another like Little Red Riding Hood retelling, but regardless. And essentially she's in charge of keeping up the wards, but one day the wards break and like these uh, creatures called the Lycan, which are essentially werewolves, like get in and they essentially, um, she's there to try to protect this goddess that she meets. And when she comes, when she's trying to protect this goddess, the werewolves are trying to kidnap the goddess. And so they take Phelan and this goddess back to their like wolf camp with them. And Phelan is technically like a witch. This also kind of falls in our witch category, but she meets the king's right hand man named Evander. And he is very sexy, very handsome. And they have like a little bit of a connection going on. But once she arrives at the wolf camp, though, the wolf king has decided he wants to make Phelan his bride. And he's using every like means, like all power and means necessary to like make that happen. It's very fun, very sexy. There's a lot of like sexual tension in this one that I really, really liked compared to some of Elise Kova's other ones. But I like ate this one up. Like I thought it was really fun, really cute. This one's again, like very much in like the romanticy vibes. Like you're not getting too much like true true substance but you're getting a lot okay you're getting a decent amount with a standalone it's a fun read it's a fast-paced read but again evander and phelan have this like very like tense sexual chemistry and it's very tense and beautiful and i just like live for it and i was like low-key maybe crying a little bit over it just because i'm like i just want what they have so bad anyways so if you're looking for sexy werewolf time this is definitely one i would recommend Okay, and now for the technically like last wolf, werewolf themed book, we have For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. Guys, I've talked about For the Wolf a lot. I, this one I would also put in my um, like true gothic fantasy books. This is an excellent adult gothic fantasy book that is essentially like with a slight wolfish element. 
So essentially in this book, there's a girl named Rodaris, nicknamed Red. Again, Little Red Riding Hood retelling. And she's the second born daughter of a royal family in this kingdom. And in this kingdom, once the second born daughter is of a certain age, she is sacrificed to this woods outside of the city called the Wilder Wood to appease the gods. And this like settles the forest and things like that. But Red also has this like magic that's like a huge burden on her. Her sister, her twin sister doesn't want her to go, but she goes anyway because she's like, no, I'm a burden to my people. I'm better off just sacrificing myself anyway. And she's supposed to. And as she goes into the woods, she's going to meet the wolf of the woods who lives there. But then she finds out the wolf of the woods is not actually a wolf, but a man. And he is essentially trying to like fix the magic that's going on in this forest. And Rodaris and him like team up to essentially like do that. This is a duology and um, the second one is absolutely fabulous. Again, very much in those gothic fantasy vibes. I love For the Throne, which is the second one. This one is incredible though. Absolutely so well written. It has like all of the little red writing kind of nuances that you like, but like and not in a cheesy, like annoying way, but in a very like interesting gothic, like creepy kind of way. And like red and the wolf like really team up and it's just like really gorgeous the the writing is fabulous it's extremely atmospheric if you're looking for something very much in those fall whimsical kind of vibes and it's just so well written I like absolutely 10 out of 10 recommend this book to anyone it is extremely well written and so fun now moving on to monster romances and I don't really quite know how to describe these books other than just like talking about it but basically we have two this is a duology by Grace Draven called Radiance and uh Eidolon or Eidolon I say Eidolon though so essentially this book is an arranged marriage trope which like I live it's so fun but essentially the book is about a young woman named Ildiko and she is the niece of this king in this kingdom of called Gar and there is a rival kingdom uh called Bast Haradis and there's a young prince there named Kai. He's the second born son of this like of the Kai people. And the Kai people, the only way that I could really describe it is that they're like six, five, maybe, maybe taller, like six, five to seven foot, like big gray kind of monstery, like low key, like elfish with like the pointy ears, but then they have like long, like black nails. They're very like very monstrous they have like fangs and stuff like almost like orcs but like hotter and like less like gross and like really like s s like sexy and stuff sounds like something i do anyways and so uh brishan and ildaiko like a meet they're very like meet literally the day of their wedding and they like meet briefly and they both like agree essentially they're like oh my gosh you're hideous to be both of themselves because he's marrying a human woman and she's marrying a, like a monster essentially and like looking at her he's like wow you are so ugly and she's like yeah you're ugly too let's be friends so this is very much like much like a friends alliance like they're very cordial with one another and like trying to figure out that like this new dynamic between how to unite the two kingdoms of Gar and um, Bastaratus, which is where he's from. There's like a very interesting like power dynamic going on with his family and the kingdom and book two is just a continuation of that. Again, it's not an enemies to lovers at all whatsoever. It is very much like a friends to um, force like a like a range marriage friends to like lovers and so it was a very interesting read because I don't normally read that type of stuff I'm very much more into like the enemies to lovers like knives to throats fit but this was like a fun monster read that I read and I actually enjoyed like I actually thought it was super cute super sweet and like would read again and have like picked up from time to time to be like oh I like Ildaiko and Brishan like they're a really cute couple and I think that they like work well together and I like that they just like can admit their faults and they know that like they're not perfect but like they're just trying to make it work in this like crazy like situation that they're both like essentially put in and I just really enjoyed it I think Grace Draven is super fun I like have an, I enjoy her writing and I think that it's an interesting monster romance so if you're wanting to try something like a little bit different that's like not totally human I recommend this one it's really fun the last one I'm gonna say is definitely like you're gonna have to stretch with me for a second you're going to have to like open your mind to like the quote-unquote monster aspect of this book Okay, it's a little bit of a stretch. Also in the YA category, we have A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmer. So A Curse So Dark and Lonely, we have, okay, again, this is going to be another stretching point for me, like a growing pain. This is technically an urban fantasy where the main character is from a modern time put into a fantasy setting, which normally I loathe. 
above all other things. I think it's cringe. I think it's like annoying. I think it's like been way overdone. But I actually think Bridget Kemmer does a decent job of like inner like linking the two of like modern time like ver like ver DC USA to like this magical world of Ember Fall. Essentially though this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So Ren is the prince of this kingdom called Emberfall. They're stuck in a continuous loop of like continuous falls until he can break this curse by falling in love with someone. But of course, he's the quote unquote beast, you know, he's a monster, you know, we're getting the vibes. And Har Harper is kidnapped by his like right hand man, essentially brought to this castle to like fall in love with him. And like at first she's like super hesitant, but think like she gets to know him more, things start changing. And hopefully they're, he's hoping that she can help him like break his kingdom's curse. It's a three book uh, trilogy. It is really fun. I'll be honest. I think book two is the strongest book in the series and it is fun, but it's definitely YA. So like heads up, it's a YA series, but still really fun. It, it conquers that like beastly element because Ren is not fully human. And I think it has like a slight like monsterish kick with like, like the the beast that he turns into which is definitely different than like what you're expecting it's very like unexpected I think Harper and Ryan have some great banter in here I really like Harper as a main character I think she's great and I don't think she's insufferable as most female leads are in a YA novel that is in this specific genre of urban to fantasy kind of situation so thank goodness for that she's actually lovely and so I definitely recommend you give this one a chance if you're looking for something more like Beauty and the Beastie vibes and a little bit more of that like retelling kind of situation I actually really enjoy this one and I think you guys will too so that is all the werewolf and monster romance book recommendations I have for you guys today so I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did do not forget to like comment subscribe to the Living Literature YouTube channel thank you guys so much for all your love and support recently the channel has been growing so much and I'm literally so grateful for all of you it is so fun to keep making videos if you guys have any video suggestions please leave them down below in the comments I am so excited for the rest of this year and all the videos that I have to offer and all the ideas that I have going through and again if there's something that you're not seeing please leave it down below in the comments like I said I love you guys so much and I hope that you have an amazing day and happy Halloween bye